hey, this is kind of just rough and off the cuff, so to speak. I didn't really plan on doing like an unboxing video or anything, but I had the opportunity here. I just figured maybe I'd stream for as long as I can. Uh, I got my portable monitor here. I just got this At Games uh, Legends Gamer Mini, and we're going to try setting it up. Um, just about bear with me here. I'm not really, don't have a plan for this. Like I said, this is just a camera literally set up to show what may be involved. Um, here's your instruction manual. Uh, I'm going to have to make an account. I'm hoping I just scan the phone into the code and set that up real quick. I'm not going to be doing any weird mods or anything. I figured we'd just get this thing out of the box, see what it looks like. Maybe give some uh, initial impressions. Uh, like I said, I got this portable monitor hooked up. I should have an extra outlet for this thing when I get to that point. So let's see what we have here. We've got this uh, very small HDMI cable. And instruction manual, as I showed. We have a female adapter here. Um, one thing I noticed uh, on one of the, uh, let me look at this real quick. So one of the things I read recently is, uh, I'm not sure how long this cable is. I think it's like three feet. Uh, somebody had mentioned that on one of the uh, Reddit subreddits, uh, there's this Amazon cable. This is $1.99. Uh, it's actually mono price. But they sell it through Amazon. It was marked down like dollar ninety nine. It's a female to female USB, and this is six feet. So I figure for two bucks, I don't know if I necessarily need it, but uh, I figured for two dollars, why not? I assume it'll give me some more leverage in terms of how far, or low, close, wherever I want to go with this thing. Um, so I think I'm just going to start with this for now, because I have a feeling I'm going to probably want that extra room. It's not black, but who cares? Seems a little more. Uh, it's a little thicker too. I don't know. Maybe not. Anyway, let's see what happens. Uh, so what else we have here? We have a power adapter for the device itself, and we have this little uh, base station, which is essentially the brains of the unit. Uh, it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. So, kind of reminds me of uh, something from like NVIDIA. I think the logo is throwing me off a little bit. Uh, but it looks like we have here, uh, looks like a sync button here. It's hard to see in the lay. I'm sorry about this. Uh, we have a power adapter here. We have the USB, HDMI, and we have an Ethernet uh, port. So, and uh, let's see what the stick looks like here. From what I can tell, the stick is actually pretty decent in quality. Oh, another thing I want to get here, I have up here. I grabbed the other day. Um, what's what's great about this, the potential for this thing, is it's which is really neat, is you can uh, add extra games to it. Um, it looks like the thing maybe runs on main, um, but you're able to sideload other arcade games. And to do so, we're going to need a thumb drive. So I grabbed this at Micro Center for 10 bucks. It's a 128 thumb drive, gig thumb drive. Some guys are recommending, you know, smaller uh, ones that, you know, that way it's not jutting out of your, you know, device here like so. But um, I wasn't going to spend $25, $30 for that. This was 10 bucks because I want to see how this works first. I may eventually do that because I, I would like maybe have a cleaner, you know, some big P-colored USB sticking out. Uh, but I was up there and I saw this for 10 bucks. I said, you yeah, know, I'm just going to get it. So, all right, let's check this out and see what we got here. From what I gather, the stick itself is a pretty decent quality. Um, oh, for starters, uh, just in case, these are selling for $49.99 at Amazon, not Amazon, GameStop at the moment. So $50. Normally they're $100. Uh, I figure what the heck, it's something to mess with, try out. And uh, not too much of an investment, but it looks like it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. You can use it as a little, a little elementary stand there. Mm -hmm. 
breakfast this morning. Kind of cool. I like that the design is, isn't, isn't too bad. Uh, has a nice uh, retro arcade look to it, I guess. It's very spacey looking. Got some nice clicking there. Not bad. Uh, they're a con concave, not convex. Um, if that means anything for anybody. Uh, yeah, at first I was thinking, eh, maybe I'm more of a convex person. But Concave. I, I could go either way, I guess. I appreciate the more center of attention. The, 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 you got more of a surface area on the uh, convex, so means you kind of have like this edging that you may not get a direct push on. But it's not bad. Click. Um, one thing that's funny is one guy in one of the videos mentioned you get two, two little. Uh, I'm actually seeing two on mine too. I, I thought maybe it was a defect. Did that come right off? I'm probably going to have to get another screwdriver. I understand you can go in here and customize these a little bit. Alright, so um, let's give this a shot and see what happens. Um, Alright, so uh, I have the monitor plugged in. This thing has to be plugged in. I've got an extra socket over there. And let's see what the look, what's this look like underneath here? Looks like it's got some little paddings. Little rubber feet, that's cool. It looks like the screws are behind them. So if you ever want to open this up, that's what you're going to want to do. It's got a nice, nice T-molding actually here. This is neat. It seems very, more high quality than like an arcade warm-up. That's weird, look at that. You got screws down here but you got empty holes up here i'm assuming that this is I, from what i understand you can plug these into uh, here we go so you got a little bit of a i don't know what's going on there but this is just a looks like a plastic covering for this to keep it kind of protected so that's kind of nice um, from what i understand you can plug these into the full size uh, legends gamer mini uh, cabinets so I have a feeling these screws are maybe for that reason. That allows you to clip it in and then screw it down. Interesting. Okay, so um, let's check this manual out here. Let's see, where do we start? Go to settings, select sign in. Looks like you can use your Google account. I may just do, you know, go and do that. All right, so, um, actually there's not much to this. So why don't we just go for it here. Let me get my phone set up and we'll sign in. Woman up the street got herself a branded Camaro and she likes to take it out and rub it around and pull it in her spot again. So I don't wanna hear that right now. All right, so, uh, Let's start, let's make this account real quick. Give me one second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go ahead and aim this right at the phone. Connection is not private. Attackers may be trying to steal your information from arcadenet.net. Hmm. Proceed, unsafe, okay. I would hope it'd be safe, I mean, right? Oh, well, this isn't a good sign. Five or three service not available. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, do we just go to their main website? Let's say here, at games.net. Games.net, let's see. Okay. And join the farm. You, know, you think they put that barcode there for a reason, right? So make it easy for people to uh, just sign up and go. Um, let's just 
do a Google search here and see if we can find that site. This is really annoying, actually. I'm getting everything except what I need here. I'm getting lots of advertising for their product, but how do you actually sign up? Like I said, this wasn't planned, so if it bores you, I'm sorry. I'm trying my best here. Oh, I could just hit that barcode and go. Sign up at arcadenet.net. I don't like this website for some reason. Oh, wait a minute. Well, no, I mean, still doing it. Service not available. That's not a good sign. How the heck do you get on here? I'll be right back. I'm going to flip over to the PC because I started looking at this on the PC earlier. And uh, just in case, there you go. Create account. Do I even need that? I don't necessarily want to buy anything. This is for the e-store though. does not like this website. Unsecure, won't even, won't even wait. Maybe it's down? this is going to work. All right, well, let's just plug it all in and see what happens here. I made an account on App Games, but I don't know if it's the same as the one I need to actually log into their device here. So Maybe two different things. I guess we'll find out. All I know is uh, this uh, QR code right here is not working for me. And neither is manually putting in www.arcadenet.net. It's uh, acting like it doesn't exist. And it also is acting like it's a security risk. 503. It says ArcadeNet account though, so that tells me I'm probably not going to be able to get it. There's, looks like there's a QR code on here. Let's try that. Let's get it all set up here. All right, so, so because it doesn't really tell you, it doesn't tell you what to plug in or anything. It's funny. It just shows you the diagram. I guess you got to have some tech know-how. All right, so we're going to plug this in. I got this adapter here. Now, this thing is completely wireless. Um, this is basically just a hollow uh, a stick control deck and it allows you to play it on your PC as well. So technically for $50 you're, you're getting a joystick and this other this puck here 
that houses the software and the other part of the hardware that allows you to run these games is completely separate from the two devices. Um, you can run this, it sounds like, on a Pi and also on a um, PC. So if you're looking even just for, I guess, a nice joystick control deck, uh, you know, fifty dollars will cover that as well. So between the two of them, I'm hoping to get something out of it. You know. Um, okay. So th this HDMI I'm not going to use right now because I'm using this little portable monitor. It runs on a, a mini HDMI. So we're going to put this uh, cable away. It's also super short, so that's not helping me any. Um, this is also the cable, like the USB cable that came away. I'm going to use my longer one. So here's the puck here. I'm going to put that there. And uh, where, what else do I have to plug in here? I'm assuming this has got to be plugged into something, right? I mean, you know what? That's the other thing. I think I have to charge this. I'm hoping it's got some power to it. Instructions for this. This is really kind of funny, actually. It's sick. There's, like, there's like nothing in here that tells you what to plug where. We have a USB port, power port, so what am I, what, what, do I need to just power this? Let's see, let's plug this in. Um, obviously this has to plug it in. What can I just do over here? So we're going to plug this into the portable monitor here. So that's plugged in. So we've got power and we got HDMI out. And we're gonna pump the power down here. And then we've got right there. So, and we got a little glow going on. Let's see, can we see that? Yeah, you can see that camera. Oh, there we go, we got life. I don't know how well it's gonna come up in the camera. Let me, let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll zoom this in and get this figured out in a minute. Okay, so, let's take this, we'll take this off here, let's put this right here. Pardon me. Please sign up or, or sign in and sign up with the Arcade Net account to register your device. So, let's... okay, so I don't know if everybody can see this. I'm sorry about this. Like I said, this is just off the cuff here. There's a blue flashing light over here. So, I'm assuming that's trying to connect to this device. But let's try hitting this. Wireless pairing. Okay. Got a pairing uh, coming up here. So I'm assuming we're device searching. I'm assuming it's an 8215 or Now I have read uh, leading up to this that sometimes you may have to reboot this thing on the first try. You can see the little Bluetooth guys. Uh, button. Is there another way that I have to pair it somewhere? There's another button on here that I can see. I don't have a Samsung TV. It must be the neighbors. Kind of creepy, actually. All right. Um, now, somebody recommended I saw in the video if this is a problem. Just to disconnect. Let's 
give it a shot and see what happens. I mean, I don't know how else you're supposed to connect this thing. Otherwise, I mean, can I part this cable? I think there's... I, mean, I guess I could... I don't think this is meant for the um, joystick, though. I'm not positive on that. Oh, all right. This thing is assuming you have this thing all hooked up. There's no directions for, oh my gosh, you got to be I'm sorry. You know what? Here are the directions. I noticed earlier, here, I got some of it over here. There's some adhesive, there was some adhesive all over this manual. You can actually see a little bit down here. And I just realized the pages were stuck because of that adhesive. That's yeah, stupid, right? Here it is though. They actually do have something here. Okay, connect the stream and the monitor using the include USB. Power on the control top. Press and hold the home menu button. Okay. For three seconds. Pressing the well, it's LED is indicating flashing at high rate. Okay, so let's start over here. Okay, so we're going to hold the power on. Okay, let's start over. Power on control top. I feel all stupid now, but I noticed, like I said, some adhesive from the... I don't know where the adhesive's from. It's weird. Maybe it was from this. It was like, like a webbing all over the control, the manual. All right. Can you use the... It's flashing. Press the pairing button on the console for three seconds. It's already flashing at a high speed, though. Press the pairing button on the... Ah, oh, there you go. We got control depth down there. This is really goofy. I mean, it's right there, but... Press the pairing button. And select control deck, continue to press the pairing button until pairing is confirmed. Oh! Oh, there we go. I see. So you have to use the pairing button to select the control deck. <laughs> so now, how do I actually say yes? Go. That's it. Do I hold it? Yeah, there you go. That is really confusing. Okay, well, there you go. That is really confusing. I'm sorry. But then again, once again, I'm kind of doing this live and on the go. All right, so now how do I get out of here? How do I get back? Do I go back here? This button? This one? Two? I don't want to pair anymore, so how do I get out of this? Okay. Nope. Oh, there you go. All right, now we're blinking. Does that mean we're disconnected?
No, it's solid. Oh, there you go. Okay. What's this? I don't know about the input lag just yet. All right, so I'm going to turn this around while I log into my uh, Wi-Fi here. Okay. Enter Wi Fi password. It's all password. A little bit of development here, so there's not a whole lot of separation amongst all the um, neighbors. Yeah, I like having a strong password. Let's see if this works. Needs to type in. I hope I got it right. Okay, it's successful. All right. You see that? Okay. I know. I'm sorry. I guess I should try to zoom this down a little bit. Huh? But I'm trying to get everything in the view. All right. Now the next problem. Let's sign in. So here's some of the games you get right here. Um, I don't know if I can maybe even see that properly. But it comes with 100 games out of the box. Uh, actually, I don't think these are the ones that are included. I think some of these are the ones that... See, here's here's where I'm going to be interested in. The BYOG is where you can uh, add your um, games after the fact. So I'm hoping this works out. I did get an email. Customer account confirmation from App Games, but I don't think that's ArcadeNet, unfortunately. So let's try signing in and seeing how this works out. Unfortunately, I have a feeling I'm going to be interrupted shortly because I live on money's home with children and a wife. All right, so it looks like it's giving you the option to go to the website www.atgames.net slash arcade net. That's a completely different address than what they have in their own manual here. This is www.arcadenet.net versus atgames.net slash arcadenet. I'm going to try just using my the information I just put in to see if this works. I don't think it will. Though. I have a feeling they're two separate accounts. So once again, I'm going to turn this and we're going to try signing in with the information I provided earlier for the uh, other site. And maybe by chance it will... be connected. The stick's uh, feeling pretty decent. It's pretty tight. It's not all loosey-goosey. Yeah. 
Good one. All right. Uh, all right, let's sign in with the QR code here. Let's give this a shot. So now it's showing me this. Let's just try this. This is what I originally wanted to do anyway to make things a little easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to point our phone at that and uh, see show options and hopefully this will work out. There you go. Perfect. That's what I want to do. We're gonna... So we can back out maybe. Let's see. All right, good. Here we go. So these are the included games, it looks like, that comes with it. Um, you know, maybe we can lower this down and adjust this camera a little bit. And uh, pop this up here. Like this. Eh. There you go. All right. So let's see what we have here. So. I think these uh, on this arcade net are games you can stream. Let's go with the, with the ones that come with it first. Like this game here, Ninja Kids. Thunder Fox. There's a lot of Taito and Data East stuff on here. Top Racer. Top Racer 2. Violence Fight. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. I think that's the Genesis version. Uh, Wizard Fire. Dark Seal 2. Wild Western. Water Margin, The Tale of Clouds and Wind. I have no clue what that is. Volfied is um, almost like a, uh, it's from Taito. It's a it's an updated Kicks in a way. You have to, if you ever play Kicks. We're on 10 of 10. Okay, so uh, some interesting choices here. This is the, looks like the Genesis version of Aladdin. So obviously they must have gotten some kind of Disney license going on here. Taito Alpine Ski. Some of these are on this new, um, Taito collection that they just put out on the Switch. It's like $30 or $40 for some of these. Like Alpine Ski is one of them. Andrew Dunos, that's a uh, Neo Geo game. Sure. Uh, Asuka versus Enasuka. Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. Boogie Wings. Bonds, uh, Bonds Adventure. Bonds Adventure. Isn't that a. I think that's a Turbo PC Engine game, if I'm not mistaken. Battle Shark, I think that's a Taito. Bang beer. I don't know that one. That's really weird. I don't even... Camel Tree. That's, a, that's that Taito game where you roll the ball through the maze. Breakers Revenge. Breakers. Chack and Pop. That's another one that's on that collection I just mentioned. Bubble Bobble. City Connection. Burger Time. Kadash. Another Taito. Crude Buster. Drift Out. That's a uh, Neo Geo. Side Battler. That's a vertical shooter. Desert Assault. That's a uh, Sega game I just discovered recently, thanks to this uh, stick. I never heard of it, and uh, it looks like it runs on some kind of weird Genesis uh, hardware uh, for the arcade. Those are War, Elevator Action. This is the one I'm anxious to try out. I'm curious to see how this is going to run. Elevator Action Returns. It's always been a bit of a bugger to emulate in name and whatnot. So, Dondoko Don, Taito. This is a Donald and Mel. I don't know. Is that a Genesis game? Carnal's Revenge. That's a fighting game. Fix of Felix. That's the original. Gate of Doom. That's an interesting Data East uh, action fantasy thing. Growl. It's my brother's favorite. Uh, Gun and Frontier. It's another one. A lot of these are even on that new um, Egret 2 collection from Taito. Like Gun and Frontier is one of them. Liquid Kids, Joe and Mac, Joe and Mac Returns. I love Lunar Rescue. That's a great one. That's a um, Taito. Came right after Space Invaders. Magical Drop 3. That's a Neo Geo. Kiki Kiki Kai Kai. That's uh, Pocky and Rocky. Before Pocky and Rocky. On the SNES. That's where everybody knows that one from. Uh, Peter Pepper's Ice Cream Factory. Almost looks like some weird uh, 
burger time thing. Metal black, and I'll tell you, that's a horizontal shooter. Nastar Warrior is uh, Rastan 2. Uh, not a big fan of that. Uh, what's funny, though, is you see that in Japan, his name is Nastar. If you reverse it, it's Rastan for the rest of the world. Or her Pinvo. Pirate Pete is a title game there. I think that was their follow-up to avoid try to avoid some copyrights with Tarzan and everything. I know they changed the guy from Tarzan to like a pit helmet. Now we've got Pirate Pete. Similar game. Operation Thunderbolt. That's a sequel to uh, Operation Wolf. I don't know how well these games are going to perform without the light gun. I imagine you're moving a cursor around with a stick. I can't really see that working as well as you would with a um, light gun. There's our S10. Saul Dam. Rod Land. Space Gun oh, was always a favorite of mine. I used to play, I, I never say it, saw it in the arcade, but I had a lot of fun with that on name using the mouse. The mouse worked pretty decent as a, to re reproduce the gun. Space Invaders, uh, Sly Spy, Space Invaders, the X. Here's an eyeball one, though. Okay, we got all three Super Nintendo um, Star Wars games. Very bizarre choices here. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> it's just randomly thrown in there. Um, very hard games, but somewhat decent. Uh, Stormblade. Stormblade is actually one of my favorite shooters, which it's shocking to see that on here. I mean, out of nowhere, Stormblade. I love that game. Super Burger Time. It's okay. It's not bad. Uh, Savalian. That's another one I believe is on the um, Egret 2. Uh, it'll be curious to see how that plays because, I, from my understanding, yeah, uh, a, a, um, a spinner for that. Control the dragon's head. Very alien story. A lot of these games are almost like a bubble bobble type thing because you had the characters and you gotta go around and jump on platforms and transforming enemies. Love Tetris Plus. Um, that's a great uh, Game Boy game. The, Ast Ast the Astinax. That's a nice Rastar. Uh, Rastan, excuse me, uh, type game. Uh, the Ninja Kids, Thunder Fox. Okay, we've been over these because we started at the end. All right, so let's give, uh, let's see, what can we start with here? I want to start with something cool. That I like, anyway. Elevator Action Returns. So it gives you some directions on how to play. We're going to move and shoot and jump. And we're going to play by pushing the A button. And it's going to load the game. Let's see if I can boost this volume up here a little bit. I think it's already up, though. Sorry for the background noise. I'm... Got other people living here with me. Now, I'm trying to make this as clear as I can. Let's see if that helps any. Save, everyone and cat com compatible. Insert a coin. Start and down. There's no start button. Player one. Yeah, I guess you hold this and this. All right, I like ED because, as I explained in one of my prior streams, I prefer characters that are quick and nimble. I don't know if she necessarily is, but so let's run it over a little bit. Hmm. So. Is there like a pause button? That just does that. I wonder if there's a settings button somewhere that allows you to adjust in-game settings. Just jump. Now I'm just getting used to these controls and everything, trying to figure them out. I mean, I do know what I'm doing in this game, so bear with me. Um, 
Also impressions, the emulation isn't 100% as far as I can tell. It's pretty good, but... See, I'm noticing some weird little glitches here and there. And it, I don't know if it seems 100% fast. So what we got to do is go into these, these rooms here to get the data. She just doesn't seem to be moving as smoothly as she does on my Pi 4 Retro Pi cabinet over there. Um, stick feels pretty good though. It's not bad. Sorry, doggy. That was a close one. Let's see how we can get through this first little part here and then we'll flip something else. One thing I didn't like about these games is you gotta sit here and wait for these elevators. It drives me nuts. They're a huge fan of them. I like this one more than the original. Though. I was never a huge Elvira action fan. But I, I love the Game Boy version for some reason. I can't explain it. I guess I'm biased. Alright, so now how do you get out of the games here? Let's see. Let's look at the manual. That'd probably be helpful, right? How to do a firmware update. How to sign in. To tell you how to get out of the games. None of my other pages seem to be stuck here, so. Reset button. That's for the pairing of the device. Um... I don't really see anything. Quick start. Connect to internet. Update firmware. How to train it. How to set up. How to charge my control top. So this thing, essentially, this uh, control deck here uh, is you have to charge it, and it does. It runs. It looks like it must run on a, a battery to make it wireless. It does have a battery in it, in other words. So you will have to charge this thing. Um, okay. So, what are the buttons to get out of the game? You hit this. You hit that. This is weird. There's like no shortcut keys for these buttons. No other but none of these pages are, are no other pages are stuck together. It'd be nice if there's a little more of an explanation on how the buttons work. I mean there's nothing to indicate there's a main menu or anything. I'm not too really sure how to get out of this game. Sometimes doing a combo of buttons will work. But I'm not seeing that right now. 
And you know what else is, it looks like whatever I did, I lost connection to my, I think I lost connection now to the um, dongle. There you go. So I don't know what the button is here for this. Let's get out. I may have to Google this real quick. Let's see how to get out of this game. <laughs> this is like really annoying here. You would think they would include something that tells you how to get out of the game and everything. All right, here's an FAQ. I don't know if that works, so. So what's confusing to me is they're saying there's a start button. Player one. And now I lost my Bluetooth connection again. This is so weird. All right, now we're back and I can control my character. So pushing down on that gives me a credit. This is going out again though. This the Bluetooth keeps going out. And I don't know why. This thing is like flaky as anything. It's like it keeps losing connection. So that lets me put credits in. But it keeps losing the Bluetooth connection. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to reboot the whole thing. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Hmm. 
mean, the thing seems okay. I mean, but it's not very intuitive, and the instructions are terrible. You would think they'd give you like a little something to give you an idea of what the buttons do for the. They, they don't tell you anything how to get out of the game or anything. No, we're not going to do that just yet. All right, so. Here's a beta preview of Arcade. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just realized I need this back over here. Let's see if you can see what I'm seeing. Um, for a limited time, enjoy an ever growing sample. Just for being a fan. Okay, sure. All right, so I need to figure out how to get out of the game here. Is there maybe something in the settings? Rotating with prior review. Yeah. Never mind. We don't want to do that right now. But that's interesting. It's a nice little thing to have, I guess. Um, So let's see what they have on here. These are the ones, these games here are ones you can stream. And I'm not sure how the input lag is going to be on them. Um, playing all of your actions seem pretty good, but that's also running locally on this little puck over here. Um, but these are the games that are on their online service. Dragon Gun. Fatal Fury, Special, Drift Out, a lot of Neo Geo stuff on here. Um, Guerrilla War, I'm, I'm not quite sure how Guerrilla War is going to play, because Guerrilla War, you needed a, um, you know, the, the joystick had a, a little knob in it, so I'm not really sure how how that's going to operate. I mean, you had a you had a, a little, you know, it was like a, uh, the, the joystick had a rotational feature in it. Where you can aim and shoot and move at the same time. Looks like some more Genesis Super Nintendo. I don't know which version that is. Hardy Warriors, another one. I don't know how. Unless you're using the, the, the these other buttons to rotate. King of Monsters, Cheeky Cheeky Boys. That was a a new Genesis game. Konami. Oh, that might be the arcade version. I don't know. POW. A lot of unusual choices here. Some real deep cut games, which I actually like. I like these deep cut games. I always find something new. Trickle Star, Spice, Last Blade. I think Neo Geo people are going to be pretty happy. Vanguard, that's a great arcade game. I love that. Victory Road. Um, yeah, I don't really see much here that I'd want to be spending money on for like a service to pay for. Here's Athena. Um, nothing amazing in here. I think the, the ones you get with the device are actually probably a better spread of, of games, at least for me anyway. I mean, um, like I said though, I don't know, I'm afraid to play anything else because I don't know how to get out of the damn game. I gotta find, let me, I gotta figure this out. We gotta find out. Um, we have to find out. How I mean, I'm sorry if this is obvious to a lot of you guys. I never used one of these before, uh, but there's no like little get started card that tells you like what the 
commands are to exit and get in the, I mean, once you're in a game, I know you can bring up a menu. I've seen it done. Uh, you can mess around with some of the settings like scan lines and so forth, but they don't tell you unless I'm missing something, at least in the box I got here from GameStop. Um, I know they sell this like, you know, uh, like at Walmart or something and you're, you're getting it's just literally just in a brown box so I don't know if there's a different type of skew so to speak maybe there's more to the one you would get at Walmart but there's no card in there that you can have next to you that tells you what the shortcut keys are for this controller or anything so uh, I apologize if I feel like it looks like I'm an idiot here but <laughs> I mean on my cabinet up there I I can hit two buttons and bring up RetroArch, for instance, and do whatever I want. So I just got to figure out um, what this does. So I'm just going to do a quick Google search here and see if we can figure this out. So I can try playing a few more games. Control deck shortcuts. Meanwhile, I'm getting links to like Raspberry Pi and stuff. I, <laughs> this is stupid. Okay. Alright, I just how do I exit game? I'm not even sure what the home button is. Okay, so that's the home button. All right. Seven start, right? So what's the... Do I just push this to go home? Is that what... But I pushed that and it didn't work. Although maybe the Bluetooth was knocked out. Sorry. Let's just try something else here. I love the Nebraska. This is neat. You can bring up the leaderboard for the game and you can upload your scores to the leaderboard. That's pretty cool. One thing I like though is I love the bezel art on the side. It should look pretty good with this one too because this is a vertical screen game for the most part, I think. Yeah, sort of. It looks like it is. Okay, so down and start is... Okay, start and left are the key configs. Well, okay, so which button's menu? Menu. All right, we don't need to do that right now. So there you go. Okay, so I think what was going on before was this Bluetooth. I noticed the light kept going on and off. Uh, I don't know why, but... And I think when I was trying to hit this button for the main menu... It, obviously the Bluetooth must have been knocked out at the time. So now we have some options here. We got display mode. We got scan line. See, I like the scan lines. I'm going to leave the scan lines on, I think. Center fit, fill, pixel perfect. That's pretty cool. Okay. Advanced configuration. Restart required. All right. Well, we don't want to do that right now. Yeah, scan lines are all right, I guess. Let's see. All right, so there you go. That was the problem. The Bluetooth was getting knocked out for whatever reason every time I would try to push some of these buttons. And it looks like it's as simple as just hitting this home menu button to get out of the game. All right? Quick game. There it is. Okay. Cool. So I like Lunar Rescue here. You land your guy, you got a thruster here. Little dude runs over, jumps in the ship. I gotta get used to this controller. I'm not this bad at this game.
So what we gotta do now is we gotta land inside your mothership here with your dude. It's simple, but I think it's a fun game. Alright, so let's try this out here. Let's get out of here. Quit the game. And we're back to our main menu. Now, one game I want to try is... Let's check out Operation Wolf. So, ah, here we go. Alright, so I don't think we're going to be able to play this. Well, no, see, so once again, you're probably going to use the joystick to aim, so this can't be any fun. Um, if this was the... They have the $99 version of this, and it comes with a trackball. And uh, for two players. Also, you get two two big, you know, two sets of sticks and a trackball. So, obviously, this is meant for both of those devices. Um, so, uh, we're getting a seizure warning area. Anyway, let's give it a shot. I'm curious to see how this is going to work with this joystick. I'm not expecting much. This is not a game that you're supposed to use a joystick with. At least on a PC or, you know, RetroPie or something, you'd be able to, um, you know, use a trackball or a PC, you could use the mouse. And... I picked the right one. There you go. Yeah, this is hard. <laughs> it's hard with a joystick. I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's playable to a point, but you're not going to be getting... You're not going to be playing at your best, obviously. I haven't played this forever, though. I mean, I guess it's no worse than playing on, uh, like, a Nintendo uh, controller. When I was younger, I used to think that those nurses were, were carrying a ammo clip. Because you see how it's blue, just like their stretcher is blue, just like the ammo clip? I know, it's stupid, right? I still have a few physical strength left. So I'm going to get that Pepsi bottle. You know, the stick is so tight that it's actually kind of playable. You just got to get used to it. I mean, I got through that level, so that was kind of cool. The better than I thought it was going to. All right, you know what? So um, I'm pretty much done here, I think. Uh, so for my initial impressions, uh, the hardware setup was annoying. It works, but uh, yeah, it, it could have been a little easier, I think. Um, I like to think I'm pretty technically inclined. I mean, <laughs> um, I, I can't imagine somebody who doesn't have any tech knowledge. I don't know. I, I think the directions could be a little better. Uh, that said, uh, like I said, the, the, the one page was glued together, unfortunately. Um, the fact that there's no real control um, direction in here. I mean, it's home and menu and all, but it doesn't really tell you how to bring the game up. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. It I, the, the the games that are included are pretty cool. Uh, I mean, I, for, for $50, I mean, you're essentially getting, you're getting a lot of neat games in here. So even if you don't go and sideload anything and sign up for their arcade net service and whatnot um i think you're going to find enough to play here for that sale price would i pay a hundred dollars i don't think so uh but fifty dollars that's less than a, 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 a for a, a, game, a game in itself um i mean you're getting bubble bobble you're getting burger time you're getting a lot of neat classic arcade games in here um i mean heck there's aladdin i know some people you know, they just bought that Aladdin Lion King collection that came out recently. Something like Elevator Action. Emulation seems decent. I don't think it's perfect, but...
that's a game to emulate. Uh, but I think overall the selection is pretty cool. But then again, I, I mean, I, I, I'm I, a big old school gamer. I mean, I grew up with these games in the arcade, Grass Tan and all that. And I used to play, put quarters in these things as a kid. So your mileage will vary, obviously. I mean, if you're somebody younger and you have no, you may not, you may not be into these games. This Stormblade, though, I mean, what the heck? I, I, my only concern is, I mean, I guess, do I need to have an online connection to play these games? I'm not sure. If I put this box away for maybe five years and say, want to bring it out again in another 10 or something, am I going to be able to play these or do I need an internet connection? I don't know. Um, the options for this here let's see I, I assume it carries them over okay, I'm gonna put vertical on that center fit there you go that was pretty good we want we want horizontal all right uh, button mapping resume yeah, the screen line is a little too good on this. Let's shut them off. Ooh, the stick. I don't know if I like that. Let's see. It's, oh, I keep hitting that. I apologize. Let's see. Let's try this again. Let's turn off these scan lines for now. Now. All right, let's try this. I want to see what's going to happen. Oh, here. See, here you go. You get your meme. That's straight out of meme right there. This is meme. I wonder if it's going to tell you that. Now how do you select from this? X. Okay. So this just lets you play with the dip switches here. That is too funny. So this, this is, is obvious. We don't want to apply any settings. We didn't do anything. But it's the only way I see to get out of this. And uh, yeah. Okay. That was a little strange. It just kind of hiccuped itself. All right, let's try the game real quick. Let's actually play it. I gotta get used to this stick though. My my stick on my cabinet is a lot different. Oh, didn't mean that. Buttons are really clicky, but they're, I wouldn't say they're professional clicky. They're not bad, but they're not amazing. But like I said, um, if you're looking for a stick to use with the PC or your Pi, this supposedly works great. We'll plug in and, and you know, you're, so you're, you're essentially getting two different devices here. I try not to use my bombs as possible on this guy. This guy's easy, but it's fair to play through this level real quick. Okay. I definitely have to get used to this whole joystick button combination here. From my experience, this this game even emulation seems okay. I don't know what version of Meme it's running off of, but it it doesn't seem to be running as nice as it does on my Raspberry Pi Retro Pi cabinet. So I, I don't know what what's powering this thing necessarily. I don't. I think it's Android. I'm not positive. I don't know. 
Um, but the, the emulation doesn't seem to be 100% for this game. I played it enough. It's pretty good, not bad, but I'm noticing some weird little kinks here to the, to the quality of it. So anyway, all right, let's get out of this. You can hear a, when you push that button, you can hear a spring sound. Now I tried quitting the game. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if it's loading. I think we're frozen. Yeah, something's going on. We're not we're not moving here. All right. Oh, well, let's try rebooting. That's not a very good sign. I think we're done here for now anyway. It's a while for it to boot up. All right. Um, yeah. I think I'm done with for this for now. But uh, overall, I mean, for 50 bucks, it seems pretty cool. Uh, I wouldn't say it's exactly 100% not glitchy. <laughs> it's got it's got some weirdness going on, that's for sure. So. Yeah. Um, But uh, I'm looking forward to side loading some of this, some of the, some new games onto it, and taking it from there and seeing what comes out of it. Um, like I said, for the money, fifty bucks seems like a pretty good deal, just to screw around with it. I mean, um, you get this controller; it's pretty solid. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I mean, it's easy to put on your lap. I got on my lap here. It's not too bad. You can just kind of sit into this got a nice uh, depth to it so kind of brings it up a little bit to your level um, so my next step will be to try and take this thumb drive uh, plugging it into the, the, the puck here and uh, I mean if you google online uh, at games legend gamer mini BYOB BYOG um, you should be able to pretty much figure out how to add the games to it. So that's my next step. So in any case, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, quick and rough uh, demonstration unboxing of this unit. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's worth the money. Uh, obviously it has a, some temperamental issues here, but I also have to update the firmware. I'm not on the latest firmware, so maybe some of this stuff is solved by that firmware. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, for forty nine ninety nine, it's currently in stock at GameStop. I, I, stop. Um, I'd say I'd recommend it. Uh, it looks pretty cool, and if you're an older gamer like myself, I think you'll find something to play in here. Um, it's a decent little selection. I've seen I, I mean, these these all in ones from Data East and whatnot. Uh, all the other companies. I mean, they they go for even more in some cases. So right out of the box, you're getting. A nice little handful of games. I mean, a lot of these games like Wizard Fire, Dark Seal, Full Field, um, Tetris Plus, Lunar Rescue, Astanax, um, Space Invader, Stormblade, Space Gun, uh, Rastan. I mean, these are these are solid arcade classics. That uh, a nice variety of games. Taito and uh, Bay East mostly. Some Neo Geo stuff thrown in. Um, yeah, not too bad. Controls are pretty decent. I think they feel better than the arcade one-ups uh, controls, to be honest with you. Um, 
not quite sure. They're, they're probably some type of a clone of uh, Samwa or whatnot. Um, anyway, all right. Yeah, I think that's about it. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate you watching. Have a good night, guys.